Hello, we're back again, and uh, this time we're reviewing Red Seas Under Red Skies by Scott Lynch. This is part of the Locke Lamora trilogy, I guess you could call it. Mm -hmm. Book number two. This is the pirate book. Yes. They do pirate stuff in this one. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> we'll talk about non-spoiler, how our feelings are about the book, and then we'll go into spoilers, so... And Let's it's, talk about our feelings. Yeah, talk about our feelings. And then we will go into spoiler mode. And that also will obviously spoil the first one because whatever happened in the end of the first one goes into the second one. So, First book, great book. Very entertaining. Five stars, right? Mm -hmm. uh, second book, really good book. Disclaimer, though, before we begin, before I begin, um, I'm not a fan of pirates, really, at all. Uh, like, we would go see the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, and I went because she likes the movies, and I like being with her, so naturally I go, but they're, they're uh, you know, they're okay. Pirates are okay. I've just never found it interesting. They're just a bunch of dehydrated drunks that oh, get scurvy on a boat in the ocean. That doesn't sound very appealing ever to me. I, I don't think there's any way you can really spruce that up or sexify it or whatever. So for me, uh, it's just know, not it's an interesting objective. premise for, you know, reading nonfiction or fiction for me. So, um, but the book, I, I thought the book was still pretty good. Um, what do you think? Oh, I love it. Well, let's, I mean, uh, okay. let's give a brief summary of what the story is about. Right. So okay. they leave Kamor in the book on a boat, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They they stow away. They don't stow away. No. They get on a boat. How, you do it. You probably remember more than I do. I mean, I read it more. So yeah. What? So the book picks up. It pretty much um, it picks up with Locke and the normal stuff. John um, doing heisty kind of stuff, and it's kind of almost like a casino kind of situation. And they're trying to get into a guy's vault. His name is Rockwin. Requin. Requin. He has a vault that has very, very expensive taste in it. And they're trying to get in it so that they obviously like just any other lock and jock day. In the middle of all that, though, a guy named Stragos decides that he needs their help. with The Archon. Yeah. Needs their help with some stuff. He does something to make them do something, to make them help him. He's very coercive. It goes from there, yeah. And he, it's to do with, that's when the pirate starts, the whole pirate thing starts coming in. And they're on a pirate ship and they do pirate things. And then... Naturally, they're not pirates, so... They meet think, some new characters that are uh -huh, really great, yep. named Zamara and Isra. Zamira and Ezri. Yeah, and she is, Zamira is the captain. Mm -hmm. And Isra is... Esri. Is just a great character. She's, she's the, like the she's lieutenant. The... So there's that. So that's that's the premise, okay? And so it's just them being pirates. Yay for me. Apparently not so much for him because he's not a big pirate fan. Um, it's not my favorite book by any means but uh, of, the, of the three, but I did still enjoy it quite a bit. I did enjoy it more. I read it the first time and I ordered the second time. And the second time I enjoyed it more so than the first. So... There's that. I think it was because the, the guy who reads these books is, does a very, very great, a well job at... Um, a, he's a very good voice actor. Yes, yes, he yeah. is. So it, it made it more entertaining for me. But I still give it... I gave it four stars originally. The first book and the third book I gave... Uh, spoiler alert. I gave it five stars. But the... This one I gave four, star, four stars, but it's almost a five star with the audiobook. Like, it's almost there. It's not as great as the first one. I will have to say I that. I disagree. But it's still very, very good. And um, Locke and his banter and the the whole friendship between Locke and Jean, Jean is um, very, very... That's really what keeps the books going. For yes. Me. That's what kept the book going for me as far as um, the second book goes. Because I wasn't really interested in, in any of the other characters. Like Zamira, Ezri, the Archon, Requin, um, Solendri, who is um, Requin's assistant or bodyguard or whatever you want to call her. I, just, I mean, overall, the, the only interesting thing that I liked was something that happens later. Well, it's early in the book that Locke witnesses that really 
triggers him. I don't like that word triggers, but it's a good word to use in this case. Triggers him emotionally. He, he watches something happen. Um, it's basically like poor people fighting for money or, or being abused for money. And that was compelling to me, but then nothing really happens with that. So, I mean, overall, generally, the book, the book is good. Yeah, I mean, if you like the first one, you'll probably like the second one, especially if you like pirate stuff. But uh, I, I thought it was all right. I thought it was good. It was good. Mm. So, how many stars are you giving it? I'd give it like three and a half. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. I and I and I say that because I did the audiobook. I haven't read the physical books yet of this series. That, like she said, probably is what kept it kept me interested more in the story as opposed to maybe the paperback version. I don't know. I'd have to read it, but um, I found myself like tuning out of the book when I was listening to it, mm-hmm. doing things, and so. I would have to like rewind and go back to that's an old word, rewind, <laughs> um, and re-listen to some parts quite a bit. So that's how I know, for me at least, that it wasn't um, nearly as gauging yeah. as the first one. So sorry, <laughs> but you are still going through the series because you are already on the third yeah one, yeah. So. I'm I'm uh, listening to the third one now, and it's it's pretty good so far. I like they're back, you know, on land, which is what I like because th- there's just a whole lot more story that you can tell when you're on land as opposed to the sea or the ocean or water or whatever I think personally. when you're stuck on one boat mm-hmm. yeah yeah so let's get back to the this book though yeah so that that's I mean I don't know what else we could say that's not spoiler yeah, yeah so we'll move into spoilers yeah spoilers <laughs> <laughs> so yes it's spoil section time so, but we do think that if you enjoyed the first book and you are like, oh man, I'm glad it's a series, please keep, keep, keep going. And even if you don't like pirates like him, then you just, just know that it's one book. And if you really don't want to read it, just read a summary online or of, of the plot. Or, um, you know. And then skip to the third book and then you'll be good because so far the third book's uh, pretty good, I would say. Third book's my favorite. Anyway, so, spoil time. I liked, actually, the scene, though, where in the very, very, very beginning of the book where they're, they're doing the card games with the other two women, and they did their little trickery, and Yeah, so actually, they're, in another, they're in another city now, and they're running a small-time scam playing cards, and they're winning most of the time, but not yeah, too much. Right. And that's th- about a scene where the- they're playing these two women, and they found a way to get the women to pretty much put an advantage of them, and it's got nothing to do with actually cheating the game, but actually cheating the women. Mm-hmm. And that was a lot of fun to read, and I enjoyed that immensely. Yeah, and so while they're doing this, they've concocted the scheme that they're going to rip off Requin by going through Solindry and meeting her, and then getting an audience with Requin and stealing from his vast vault that houses all these nobles and other people's money and lots of treasures and stuff like that. And so, and the book throughout like goes into like how they're like slowly it like comes in where the little parts that, how they're going to get in the vault throughout the book. And I enjoyed that immensely because that yeah, again reminds like, me of the heist stuff. Like, yeah, it's like mission impossible or something yeah. where they're, they're getting their, their tools and, and strategy together and, and it's coming together, but it doesn't really pan out. Like no, they want it to. That's true. And so, which I also enjoyed. I like. Yeah, the and fact then they also have this scam with the Archon, but that doesn't go the way they think it does. And I forget how did they end up uh, with the Archon because they like wake up well, or the, something. The, well, the Bonds Mage are still the are still part of this the story. Yeah. And they are actually, you know, obviously very upset with what they did with their, one of their the guys. Falconer. Yeah. The Falconer. And so, but then Stragos kind of like takes over that whole, like getting back. Oh yeah. Thing. The bonds mage appoint uh, Archon Stragos of this city state or whatever it is to exact punishment on Locke and Jean for yeah. what they did. It's, it's a really bad thing to kill a, Bonds mage because they all come after you, but it's almost as bad to hurt one. And basically, they they cut out his tongue and like broke his bones or something. I can't remember. They it's cut off. Bad. They cut off all his fingers. Oh and yeah, took that's out right. His tongue. Yeah. So pretty much, he was useless as a bonds mage. It drove and, him insane. Yeah, and it drives him insane. And so they want revenge, but at the same time, they didn't kill the bonds mage or the falconer. Yeah. So. 
So Stragos this is, is a way of fix to make it even, and Stragos gets gets them both and puts them into a room that makes it like ridiculously hot to the point where they are like dying of thirst, literally. Mm -hmm. And then he like presents them with a really good poison. wine that has poison in it, and they like immediately are drinking it, and then they're like. Then he tells them. Yeah. And so then he has them in his grasp, and he wants them to become pirates to instigate. Um, a conflict with these elements that he has been at war with for years in order to trap them and wipe them out. And so um, they are forced to break out these prisoners that were handpicked by Stragos. Mm -hmm. And they get he already has a ship for them, so they get the ship. They go out to sea. Everything Goes basically wrong. falls apart pretty fast because they're not real pirates. Yeah, and they're they they're playing make-believe. And they actually have one of the guys. A guy, have I can't a, remember his name. But they have he's, a fleet commander. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not a fleet commander, but they have an actual captain being their like assistant. But he has a heart attack and dies. Yes. And then the jig is up real quick. So then because they, they also, go into a storm. Yeah, so they get set out to a boat, but then another pirate ship comes, and that's when uh, Zamira and Ezri come into play, take over the ship, they become prisoners. They eventually work their way into the good graces of the captain mm -hmm. and um, Esri. Jean falls in love with Esri. Um, they do some things to win the trust of these two. Locke eventually tells Zamira tells about... Tells the truth. Yeah, tells him the truth. And then there's a kind of um, uh, argument or conflict between Jean and Locke, so they're not really talking for a while. And eventually they come back together and decide that they're going to get back at both Requin and Stragos. They come up with a plan that like, cause it's like almost like kind of like Pirates of the Caribbean. There's like a whole like group of different mm -hmm. kind of pirate ships, pirate, you know, captains, and they all decide what they should do to like get back at Stragos. And so they say, yeah, we're totally on board with this. And then one of them decides that he's not on board with this. And so, and it turns out one of them, one of the others really wasn't either. Yeah. Right. And so he goes to take care of business and pretty much destroy to go there and destroy Zamir's ship and all. So the that's a really cool it. scene. Yeah. I like that where the pirate versus pirate action. Um, this guy is like this huge, huge bald guy. I can't remember yeah. his name, but he, um, he attacks them uh, under the pirate flag, and there's this big um, battle, whatever you want to call it. And he has something up his sleeve. It's like this alchemical fire uh, or, or a harpoon that once, like, thrown, um, like, burns Won't unnaturally. Yeah. And it, it, it will burn the ship down. He throws the spear, or um, somebody on the ship throws the spear, and it actually hits the ship... But Esri, it either hits the ship or Esri, she doesn't catch it, does she? Okay. Anyway, she ends up with the spear in her hands, full, knowing full well that's going to kill her. And it does. It burns her to death, but not before she manages to throw the spear on back onto his ship. And no one's willing to save them, so yeah, that ship goes down. And Pretty she, quickly. She and, does die. And a great blaze of fire. Mm -hmm. And so they survive. The ship's damaged, but they all survive. Esri's dead. Jean is completely an emotional wreck because yeah. of it, because he knows what she did. And Locke was going to try to stop her, and I believe she, like, sucker punches him or something, so he can't do anything about it. Yeah. Because he, he recognizes the look on her face, and she she uh, punches him and incapacitates him just long enough. Because Zamir has two kids. Her two ki She's got a daughter and a son, and so... On the ship. Uh, uh, Isra is very, very attached to these children, and so she knows what this all means, and so she... And she knows what it means herself. for Jean, too. Yeah. She so saves she Jean. Herself. And Jean knows that as well. Which, okay, I was not a big fan of the death, only because I knew it was coming. Like, it was yeah, very... Yeah, it did it, seem... It was going to be obvious that... To me, it would have been even it would have been a shock and a surprise if she survived and went along with them to the next adventure, mm -hmm. because that was not something that I think you would have, as a reader, saw coming. Well, and that was the plan. So, um, Esri, Locke, and Jean had a plan to once this was all over, they were going to purchase a ship and take some time off and sail around yeah. the world and maybe uh, introduce her to their schemes on land. But yes. of course that didn't work out. But like she said, we, you do kind of see it coming in the writing, even yeah. in the audiobook. Because I knew it was coming and it wasn't surprising at all. Because Jean just like absolutely loves her. It's like his first, it's his first love, I think. 
I don't think he ever mentions anyone else. No, well, yeah. If, when you're reading the second book, you you believe that this is the person that Well, he's that's what we're talking about because yes. I haven't read the third book. Right. So don't spoil so, anything. Yes, it, he's completely in a, uh, very, very much in love with her. And Locke finally, that's what gets them in an argument because he's like, I'm not going to portray these people. So you do whatever you need to do, Locke, but just know that I'm not on board with betraying them anymore. Like, I'm not on board with lying to these people anymore. These are our kind of people. And then finally, uh, Locke decides to tell the truth and be a part of the whole group. Okay, so let's move on to the end. Um, so, yeah, so then they go... Once that battle's all taken care of and done, then they go to back to Stragos. The, the poison that he gives them, like, it takes months to, like, do its job. Start it. Start so acting. as long as they keep, you I think know, it's every three months they need a dose, or every two or three months they need a dose yeah. each. And then in the book they go off. back and get a dose once, but then they're going back to get another dose. And they don't get it. Yeah, they're planning on pretty much ending it finally. And Like taking, Locke's idea was that they would take the alchemist's hostage and right. force him to create uh, a cure. But right. That doesn't happen. Right, because the, the... And it was starting to work out for their favor, and then one of her assistants for Stragos ends up killing the guy. Yeah. And so they only have one vial, and that vial is only for one person. So... And it will, you know, that is the cure. And, and so... And Locke tricks Jean into drinking it. Yeah. And Jean is majorly yes. pissed off about it. But it's funny because he's like, you were, you were planning on doing the same thing to me. You were going to force me to do it. Yeah. I just used my brains while you were using your bronze and it was too late. Yeah. Which is true. Mm -hmm. Which just shows how great their friendship is. And then, yeah, and then they go to Rockwood and they they do that. And that goes well for them. They they, they get, manage to pit um, Stragos's, Archon Stragos' men, the eyes, I think they're called, against um, Requin's men. So there's confusion. Yeah. And in that confusion, they make their move. They, were, the idea was never actually to get into the vault because they figured out it wouldn't work right. um, after a certain point. And so they decided to just steal everything in Requin's office. They make their move against Solindri in the office. They overpower her. They beat some guards. And they steal all, cut out all of his paintings out of the frames and steal some other stuff. Which was the plan all along. They wanted them to think that they were getting the vault. But yeah. in reality, they just wanted these, which if the paintings were actual real then they would have been ridiculously expensive and that would have been paid for it just on its own but, but they're not real nope he keeps they're very the real very ones good fakes in the vault like that's right. everything else that's worth any money and i'm surprised Locke didn't really consider that but so the funny scene is when he gets to the what do they call him the art dealer or whatever yeah. in the other city and the guy's like yeah these are very good fakes they're not real so i i can pay you like 13 bucks for them and he's like what yeah he's you like, know, these are supposed to be worth like thousands and thousands of gold so solari or solari or whatever the it's coinage so is called but he's so annoyed he's and so immediately upset. they both realize that they have to start scheming again and that's pretty much the end of the book. Yes, yes it is. Mm -hmm. Them getting so. on the boat that they were planning on getting on with uh, Isra, Isra, Esri. 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 Um, but they got on that boat and then that's the end of the book. Mm -hmm. To the next... And Locke is still poisoned. And, yes. And, so and remember that he didn't get that dose. So... It's, gonna, it's yeah, not going to take long. It goes from there. Yep. But that's the end of the second book. Uh, like I said, I thought it was pretty good. I'm um, not really a big fan of the pirate stuff, but um, the action that does occur in it and on the pirate ship and the, and the relationships, all that's really good. It's just that setting for me doesn't really work. Uh, she loved the book. She what was you for? I five, wasn't. You said? Uh, uh, well, the audio kind of bumped it up. It's not yeah. exactly. It can't be with the first book or the third book. So I can't give it a five star because I feel like it should be rated a little bit lower because I do like the heist parts of the book. And I felt like because they were on a pirate ship and doing pirate things, that kind of took away from that. And so I was a little bored at times. But I did enjoy the fact when, like, for instance, when they do get caught that they're not pirate people. And so they get on the boat, on this little tiny boat, and pushed away. And then they, like, get back on the boat. And she's like, get naked. And, like... Yeah. <laughs> He's like, what? Really? Yeah, it's just like that whole conversation and that whole like ordeal was just, I was actually laughing out loud both times, even though I knew it was coming the second time. And I just, I just thought that was so funny and so entertaining. 
There, there are really good parts in it. Yeah. Um, so like I said, I would give it like a three out of five Oof. or three and a half out of five. She gives it a four out of five with the audio version. Mm -hmm. I would say, I'd say probably with, with the voice actor, um, I would say the audio book was probably better um, just as a guess because I haven't read the physical book. But um, Okay, so yeah, here's the deal. If you really enjoy pirate books, if like pirates are your thing, read the book. And if you're like, okay, I just want to like, I like I'm not a big pirate fan. I've done pirate books. They're not that my thing. Then do like the me. audio so that way you're able to enjoy the actual guy who's reading and entertaining you. Because he does a very, very good job. Yep. So if you like the video, give us the thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Click the bell thing. Um, I guess Click we have to thing. have people do if that now. If you've read the book things. or started the series, let us know how you're feeling about it. We've, I, this is like by far one of my favorite series. It's almost beating out Harry Potter, but that's not the point. Um, it's good so far. Yeah. I I'd really, I it. love this series so much. And I'm so glad that I found it through another YouTuber, but I love it. So if you love it or if you have any comments on it, please leave a comment and let us know because I would love to discuss it with you and have a conversation. I could not not talk about this book ever. Like it's, and if you don't like it, tell us why. Oh. I, I always like to read those kind of comments, yes, too. Yes, make so. me cry. Go right ahead. <laughs> All, right. All right. See ya.